Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Misnya Midi tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at keyframing looks inside of DaVinci Resolve. You can use this for all sorts of things from, you know, dramatic mood changes, fading from like, oh, black and white into color, or color into black and white, all sorts of good things. Or just if your lighting changes and you need to sort of adjust your grade that way, it works. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. You see I've already got this clip uh, graded the way I want it to, but now I want to fade it into black and white. So how do I do that? I'm just going to hit Alt S to create a new serial node. I'm going to rename this just by right clicking and then going to changing label. I'm just going to call this BW for black and white. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see that this is number eight in my little node view. Then you can come down to your keyframes window, which is right here in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. You find corrector eight, which obviously corresponds to the little number there. You see, we've got, you know, seven, we've got parallel, all these things. They're all laid out pretty nicely. So we just click on this little triangle here and that'll open up all of the options that we have to keyframe. So keyframing in here, what do we have? We've got linear window, circle window, polygon window, power curve, gradient window, color corrector, qualifier, misc isolation, defocus, noise reduction, OFX, and node format. So all we're going to have to deal with for changes to black and white is color corrector. And a lot of these seem kind of weird at first, but then you kind of realize Oh, you know, that makes a lot of sense. So we've got color corrector here that is just going to deal with this stuff over here. It's kind of this, uh, most of this window. So it's got color wheels and, you know, some other stuff in there. So to get started with this, we're going to set a keyframe for our beginning grade, which is going to be this color one. So it's going to go to color corrector, click on the little keyframe button, because uh, that'll enable keyframing, but that doesn't create a keyframe yet. You're going to want to right click and do add dynamic keyframe. The difference between dynamic and static keyframes are static keyframes, um, if you're familiar with After Effects, it's like a hold keyframe. So you'll go from one look and then you'll cut directly to the next look. Well, a dynamic keyframe will sort of fade between the two. So we want a dynamic keyframe for this. So you're gonna pop that in there. Then we're gonna just move forward to where we want it to be completely black and white. So sweet thumbs up by Caleb. And we're gonna reduce the saturation and you'll see right there, it automatically adds another keyframe for us. We only need to add the first keyframe in the timeline manually, but the rest of them after that will do auto keyframes for you, which is really nice. So we're gonna bring the saturation down. I'll say, we'll, you know, bring the gain up and bring the lift down, make it really crunchy black and white. We'll think like, you know, Chase Jarvis live type style. Sweet, so we got that. Now we can just play it back. Boom. So that's really simple, how to fade between looks in DaVinci Resolve using dynamic keyframes. Static keyframes work a lot the same way, but they just sort of cut from one look to another. And these same keyframing techniques can be applied to, you know, as you can see, pretty much any aspect of a corrector and then do it for, you know, multiple correctors. It's really great. It's a super powerful feature that not a lot of people use because it's a little bit not very intuitive to get started out with. But once you got it, you know, you can be knocking the socks off, you know, producers left and right about how you can fade from color to black and white. So once again, I've been Theo with Meesner Media. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't like it, give it a dislike. If you really liked it and think that some of your buddies could, you know, use this knowledge, be sure to share it on your various social platforms. While you're there, be sure to follow Meesner Media's social media stuff. We've got Facebook and Twitter. Links are in the description. If you want to get really into the nitty gritty of Meesner Media, be sure to check out the website, www.meesnermedia.com. Link for that is also in the description. If you want to see more stuff like this, be sure to subscribe to the Meesner Media YouTube channel. If you've got any questions, comments, concerns, jokes, be sure to put them in the comments because comments are tons of fun. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.